Well, hello, my name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I want to visit with you for just a couple of minutes about what I call the successful real estate entrepreneur's mindset. Now, if you've been following my training and coaching for any length of time, you probably have heard me say this quote, and that is, until you own the real estate in between your ears, it's gonna be very hard for you to own any conventional real estate. And what I mean by that is controlling your thoughts, controlling what you think about, and making sure that you have the right attitude and the right perspective as relates to your business, your personal life, how it is that you interact with other people, et cetera. So recently, I interviewed on my podcast show, which is called Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. You can follow me there on iTunes, Google Play, you know, YouTube channels, et cetera. And recently on one of the shows, I interviewed a very good friend, business colleague, and also success coach, Chaffee Wynn. Had him come on the show, and we both discussed from our own experience and perspective, we both discussed, well, what does it take to have a successful mindset or a mindset that is actually got to be the, the mindset you need to have to be successful, whether it's real estate investing or it's, you know, anything, you know, that you want to accomplish. And so on the show, Chaffee and I actually identified eight different mindsets or attitudes, if you will that lend themselves to being successful. And I will tell you that doing the, you know, taking advantage of these strategies and mindsets will definitely increase your odds of getting you to where you want to be. And if you don't employ these strategies, I will say from experience and also in coaching hundreds and hundreds of other coaching clients in real estate investing, you will be hindered, held back, and not get to where you want to be nearly as quickly as if you, and when you employ these strategies. So the first one that we talked about is taking action. So there is a bridge between gaining knowledge and learning information and actually implementing what you've learned. So on the podcast show, we talked in detail about what that difference is. You know, sometimes people get confused and think that learning information and getting knowledge, which by the way, you must have, I mean, you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. And I would prefer you not go to a seminar by a bad investment strategy that you hadn't planned on going to. When I say seminar, I'm talking about making a big mistake. That's going to cost you a lot of money, but taking action. What we're talking about is actually implementing the information that you've learned, you know, paralysis by analysis. Some people just get wrapped around the axle and continue to, you know, think about what it is that they want to do without, without ever pulling the trigger. So just don't confuse learning and getting coaching and support with implementation. It's you, it's you that is, must be 100% responsible for everything that you respond to in your life. And until you gain that 100% attitude of being responsible, then, you know, you're going to be blaming, making excuses, and you're just not going to get to where you want to be. So take action. Number two that we talked about was to adopt what we call an abundant mindset. The opposite of an abundance mindset is having a mindset of scarcity. And what I mean by that is if you are focused on worrying about what might happen or being fear and not taking action in spite of your fears, then that's going to hold you back. So having an abundant mindset is very, very important. And, you know, how do you get an abundance mindset if you don't have it? Well, you may have heard of the late Jim Rohn and Jim Rohn is attributed with the quote, that says you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. 
And so the advice is start hanging around the right people. If you're not hanging around the right people, I want to hang around people that have already become successful in whatever arena that I want to be involved in. So that's one surefire way that you can increase your odds of having the right outlook on life and how to respond to when challenges come along and challenges are going to come along every day. And so you want to have the right mindset that you will stay in a positive frame of mind when the challenges come along. Number three, we talked about understanding your why, your W-H-Y, also known as your purpose. What it is that you're passionate about. And I can tell you from my own experience in the past, whenever I have gotten involved in a venture And my main motivation was just to make money, regardless, without consideration of how are other people being served through this venture. I failed miserably every time. In the past, you know, years ago, I attempted to get involved in uh, some different multi-level marketing companies. And I was young. I was back in my 20s. And I was only doing it for the money failed miserably. So again, make sure that you are involved in whatever venture it is that you are wanting to be involved in. Make sure that you are passionate about it and that it is an aligned with your values. And it's also aligned with your overall purpose that you have decided to focus on. Number four, resist the shiny object syndrome. Now, what's that? Shiny object syndrome is something new and exciting comes along. And now you're like got squirrel brain and you start chasing that idea. And before you even get that launched, another shiny object comes along, you start chasing that. Well, what I've learned and discovered is you want to stay focused on what you're passionate about. Okay. Now you can be passionate about like, you know, I play the piano, right? I'm passionate about that but I'm talking about being passionate about something that's actually going to reward you with the financial rewards that you're really wanting. So resist. In fact, the most, (laughs) the, the people that are struck the worst with shiny object syndrome are successful real estate entrepreneurs. I've got shiny object syndrome, but I manage it. I manage it. I'm in control and I choose wisely. All right. So, be aware of that. Number five, don't overanalyze. I mentioned this a second ago, analysis by paralysis. So you are either a thinker brain by nature, which means you analyze and think and think and think about it, or you are a, what's called a reptile brain. Okay. So I'm a reptile brain, which means I'm like a snake. I see it. I make a fast decision and I strike at it. And then I try to figure it out. Right. So reptile brains make much quicker decisions than the over over analyzer. So when I say don't over analyze, that doesn't mean I don't want you to make informed decisions and have all the facts before you make a decision to take action, but don't over analyze. I mean, you know, in perspective of real estate investing, you know, don't be thinking about and analyzing a deal for three weeks and, you know, come to find out that deal's already gone because Another real estate investor has made a decision and has purchased the property. So what I'm talking about is as relates to looking at a deal and whether you should do it or not, then, you know, when I look at a property lead sheet, I mean, literally in less than 60 seconds, I know as to whether there's a possibility of a deal by looking at what is the seller asking, what's the current mortgage information, what is the after repaired value? I know how we're going to structure that deal. Now, yes, I've reviewed thousands of property lead sheets, but you would want to get yourself to a place as quickly as possible to where you're not going to be over analyzing deals. Number six, learn to prune. Now, this is so important. Learn to prune. What we mean by that is you may have some projects going on in your business or your personal life that you just need to cut off and just get rid of it. It's not serving you. It's not in alignment with your purpose. It's not in alignment perhaps with your values, or it's not giving you the return on your time. You see, that's really our most important asset besides relationships. And that is time. 
what are you doing with your time? And are you working or still have a project going on that's not giving you the return on your investment of time and or money? So take an inventory of everything you got going on and cut out what is not serving you anymore. Number seven, mindset. Listen well. Listen well. When you learn to be an excellent listener, you will be like in the top 3% of the population. Most people don't listen. When you, I'm not, and I'm talking personally and in business. Most people, when you are in a conversation or you're visiting with someone, either one on one or you're at a networking group or it's social, doesn't matter. Most people, when the other person is talking, is either shifting their eyes back and forth or they're thinking about what they want to be saying next themselves. When I say listen, that's what I mean. Listen. When the other person's talking, and by the way, that other person is going to know it very, very well and very, very clearly. I mean, you know that when somebody is not listening to you, and is it not irritating? And does it not, you know, damage the relationship to some degree? So if you will just start practicing listening, being a very intense listener, and don't be thinking about what it is you want to say next, you will stand out from the crowd and you will be deemed by the other person as one of the very best conversationalists they have ever had a conversation with by you simply listening to what the other person is saying. And then finally, Chaffee and I on the podcast show, we talked about taking advice from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is known as saying that, well, first of all, his success comes from intense focus. But what he's known as saying, and I paraphrase, and that is he talks about how he has made so much more money and returns by focusing on less than focusing on more. So here's what Warren Buffett practices. In fact, I was reading in a book recently how he told his personal pilot how to achieve his goals. And it's three steps that he gave on how to achieve your goals. First, he said to his pilot, take a piece of paper and write down your top 25 goals that you want to accomplish. After you've written down those top 25, and that can be in all six areas of life, career, financial, personal, relationships, spiritual, et cetera. You write down those top 25, and then you circle the top five. This is step two. You circle the top five of those 25. He then says, step three, you take the other, the balance remaining of, of that list of 25. So you take the other 20 goals that you wrote down, and you put those on a not-to-do list. And you focus on those top five until you accomplish those five, and then you move on from there. So if you're not in the abundance, one of the strategies we talked about, an abundance place or an abundance mindset, how do you get there? Well, here's a couple of tips before I let you go. First of all, consistently listen to educational and positive podcasts on topics and subjects that you're really, really interested in. Secondly, read positive and motivational material. One of my favorite resources. I get an email every day from medium.com. I also have their app and you can choose the different topics and subjects that you're interested in and you can search for those. Now I upgraded to the, to the paid membership, which is a whopping $5 a month, but I love reading those articles. They're only like four minutes to six minutes to read these articles. And I start, that's part of my morning routine is starting out with one of those positive educational articles. So listen to the podcast, read that type of material. And as I mentioned a moment ago, develop relationships with people who can lift you up and take you to where you want to be. So I'll leave you with this folks. Your future is determined by your choices and your actions. Therefore, choose wisely. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking you to the next level.